Hello, my friends, and welcome finally to my review of Numbuzzin Skincare. As some of you do know, for the past month, I have been testing a total of nine products from Numbuzzin. This ended up being another case of me having some absolute favorite products from this brand and then some that really just didn't work out for me. And so we are gonna again use the ranking system. I'm nervous. I do know that my opinion on some of these products is not the same as the popular opinion. So we are definitely gonna start with my favorite and work my way to the products that uh, didn't work out for me. Please don't be mad at me. I feel like some of you are gonna be mad at me. <laughs> As always, we have timestamps and links for every product in the description box below. And I do want to start this video with a little bit of housekeeping. There's some things I want to say about this brand before I get into the product reviews. So Numbuzzin is a Korean skincare brand made in Korea, and their tagline seems to be this what's your number approach. They have products labeled numbers one through nine. And when I first discovered this brand, I was over here thinking, okay, so you figure out your skin type and then you buy the entire line based on one of those numbers. So I typed into Google, find your Numbuzzin number. And do you know what came back in the results? First of all, not a lot, but then I did find on Numbuzzin's own US website, which I guess is closing at the end of this month, by the way, that they answered this by saying, sure, we can help you find your number, just send us an email. And it felt so surprising. It was like, wait, you got an email to find your number? So me being me, a very determined soul who likes to try to simplify things, I went through the entire list of all of their products and wrote down the claims for each product in each number, right? And I gotta admit to you, it really feels all over the place. I do think that the number one collection is probably for oily skin, number two, probably for damaged barrier, Three, texture and dullness. These are the words that kept repeating. And then four, dehydration and aging. But the thing is, numbers five through nine, it just feels all over the place. And maybe that's because nine different skin types seems like both a lot and also not enough. <laughs> so in the end, in spite of their tagline, I feel like don't worry as much about the number. I would say just, you know, purchase the products that appeal to you the most. Just to give you an example here, I really liked the number four cream as my day cream and then the number two cream as my night cream. So it just feels like throw the numbers out the window for the most part, at least. I did buy every product in this video with my own money from actually all three of the retailers that I talk about the most. I really do like all three retailers. I'll have the Numbuzzin page linked below for each one of them and I'll put my discount codes up on the screen if you find this video helpful and would like to help support the channel, feel free to use my affiliate codes. As that will give you a discount and it will give the channel a commission. And one more note here, I wanted to tell you about what my skin has been like while using all of these Numbuzzin products over the past month because it has been so interesting. I feel like there is one word that describes what's happened to my skin, and that word is resilience. This could be because of my top three favorite products, but it could just be that Numbuzzin is very good at formulating for strengthening your skin's barrier. That is certainly what it feels like for me. You know, we traveled last week. I always break out when I travel, but even when I had my, my little chin breakouts, I felt like the skin around them was stronger. I felt like they healed really quickly. And so I've, I've really got to give it to this brand. I do see the hype in that, you know, that's really an important aspect of skincare. You want your skin to be able to bounce back, to be strong. And I cannot be unhappy about that because overall this brand is very affordable. There is nothing over $30. And depending on the sale, you can catch some of these for as low as 10, 15, 20 dollars. And then finally, in case you are new to this channel, I need to tell you my skin type because it is going to be so important in ultimately my ranking of these Numbuzzin products. And it is dry, acne prone, and a little bit sensitive. Oh, I just feel like it's gonna play into my thoughts so much. So much. We could end up with completely different rankings if you, for example, have strong, oily skin, it, it, just, it just could be completely different. 
Are you ready to get to ranking these numbas and products? Again, I am going to start with my absolute favorite and work my way down. Now, the first three are all great products. These are all truly some of my absolute favorites after a month of this brand, but there can only be one winner and it was kind of hard to pick. I ultimately feel I have to be true to myself and choose the product that I loved so much that I've almost managed to plow through it in a month, which is pretty impressive. But it's just that I, I loved it so much, I never wanted to stop using this. And nope, it is not the number three serum or toner. It is one you may not have heard of. It is the number two Sika Ceramide Repair Cream. Now listen, you know how I said my skin type is gonna be incredibly important in my ranking? Ugh, this is absolutely a product that just illustrates that. I do not think every one of you is going to like this at all, but I do think that some of you might just love it as much as I do. This is a really, really thick, nourishing moisturizer. And one thing I've noticed with trying a lot of K-Beauty brands is that it's kind of hard sometimes to find these really thick moisturizers. A lot of them run really light. In fact, the only other heavy moisturizer I've found, and of course became an instant favorite, was the See Where It's Deep in a Barrier. I prefer this. I absolutely prefer this. Let me go ahead and make sure to read you the claims on this product. So Numbuzzin says this is for deep repair and moisturizing, very true. Skin strengthening, again, very true. And oddly enough, they actually add that this helps with breakouts and irritation. And again, like I was saying in the intro of this video, yes, very true, very true. There's nothing in here that is really an acne treatment, but by strengthening your skin, I think that very act does help with breakouts. This is a fragrance-free product. They say they have reformulated this and it now contains more of the Sika and I think maybe the ceramide ingredients. It actually has a lot of ceramide, 1% total, which it may not sound like a lot, but for a ceramide product, that's a lot. It also has those four constituents of the Sika plant, Medeca Soside, Asiatic Acid, etc. And that formula leads to such a good repairing moisturizer. I think that if you have dry skin, you're gonna love the feel of this. If you are looking for support for your moisture barrier, you are going to love what this does for your skin. So I did show you all a routine in which I use this after using my Adapalene. That works really, really well for me. I'll also go ahead and show you some up-close swatches in this video. And for this video, I wanted to focus on showing you product textures. So I'll go ahead and show you a swatch of this product so you can see how thick and moisturizing and nourishing and occlusive it really looks. But I also want to show you a comparative swatch. I swatched it next to the Biosance Omega Cream and you can see the similarities. It's not a direct dupe, but it is that case of if you like this, you will probably like this. But again, I gotta make sure to emphasize, even though I am ranking this as my number one favorite, I don't know if everybody will like it. In fact, if you don't like the feel of moisturizer, you might not like this because it does really have that protective feel to it, which again is what helps my own skin type, but I don't think everyone likes that. But for me, oh, it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful to tell you about, you know, an alternative to the Biosense Omega Cream that retails for $28. Again, you can catch this for around 20, depending on the sale. And it's a big tube and it's a tube. Not everybody likes the jar packaging of the Biosense Omega. A tube, 2.02 fluid ounces, under $30. Oh, I am so happy to find this. I love it so much. Moving on to my second favorite from Numbuzzin, and again, it's another product that you may not have heard of unless you watched my skincare routine because this was in fact one of the first products that I tried from this brand. I think I did know in advance which products I would probably like. I just don't think I knew I would love them as much as I did. Anyway, that product is the number eight Fine Sika Serum. Oh my goodness, I love how versatile this product is. You know how sometimes you see these products that claim that it's a shampoo, it's also a foot scrub, it's also a lawnmower. <laughs> Even I admit that was a little hyperbolic, but uh, I would love to see it. If anyone ever carries it, it will be QVC. But no, usually products claim to do all of these things and really just do one thing. This product says you can use it as a serum 
or you can use it as a sleeping mask and that sounds impossible, right? That sounds impossible, but it works because it does have this really beautiful kind of creamy texture to it where if you use two to three pumps, it just instantly soothes and nourishes your skin. But it is true that if you use five to six pumps, that's when it kind of takes on more of this moisturizing feel. It's, it's such an interesting texture. The brand claims that this is for, again, to no one's surprise, a damaged barrier, texture, and sensitive skin. And yes, I would absolutely agree with all of that. And this is one where you can really look at the ingredients and very clearly see what's going on. First of all, this too does have all of those active constituents of Sika, which are excellent for soothing the skin. In addition to, get ready for it, EGF and FGF. That stands for epidermal growth factor as well as fibroblast growth factor. And I feel we've been seeing that more and more in K-beauty products. I'm very happy to see this because while those ingredients have existed in the West for a while, oh, they have been really expensive for us. $300 a bottle, kind of expensive. A $28 serum with those ingredients. But I do feel like I should make sure to tell you that I have looked for primary literature into the effects of those ingredients on the skin. And at the moment, I don't feel super confident telling you, oh yes, that's absolutely a, a game changer, an anti-aging ingredient or, or duo of ingredients that you need. I will say it seems they're great ingredients for the purpose of wound healing, but they do have some anti-aging claims around them that I'm not I'm not quite ready to commit to. Bottom line being more research is needed, but if I can get those ingredients in a $30 product, then I'm fine with it. Won't pay 300, 30, okay. Again, this formula is also fragrance free. We have some niacinamide, some beta-glucan, some squalane. It's really a beautiful formula. And I, I truly think this is one of their most underrated products. I've never seen anyone talk about it. It has a handful of reviews on the YesStyle website, but I am so blown away by this one. Moving on to my third favorite product from Numbuzzin. It is indeed finally a favorite the number three serum. Oh, this product is really, really, really hyped, but I wanna take you on an honest journey of what I really experienced with this product. So first of all, we do have to have a conversation about hyping products. It's, it's something that I, I think that every skincare enthusiast will always have a tendency to hype the products that worked really well for us. And yet it probably is really important to make sure that we explain why that product worked so well, but it is really hard to not sing the praises of those products when they go well for us, even with knowing that. And herein lies what I feel is sort of a little bit of a problem with this product, as well as potentially one other from this brand. You, you can guess, some of you can guess. When I first went to use this, the very first time I ever opened up this bottle, let me tell you, I had heard so many good things about this product that I truly was thinking, the second this touches my skin, it's gonna be like I have a whole new face. I'm gonna instantly have the most beautiful skin. I'm gonna never have another breakout ever in my life. My skin will just, it, it will glow. It will be so beautiful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a pony. The second this touches my skin, I will go downstairs into my living room and there will be a pony. Uh, no, 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 a unicorn. And then me and my perfect acne free skin are gonna fly off on the unicorn over the rainbow, it's just, it's gonna be, it can be so beautiful. Anyway, what actually happened is I put this on my skin and I went, that's it, that's, that's it. Because in all truth, this isn't really a formula where you are going to see instant results. So instead, as I've continued to use this product, that's where I've started to really appreciate it. You know, two weeks into this product is where I started going, oh, okay, this actually is a really great skin strengthening product. I do see my skin kind of glowing, looking more radiant, looking more healthy, feeling more strong. But it did not happen overnight. I had to stick with this product to appreciate it. Uh, so again, this is a product that does claim to help with softening. It claims to help with texture, pores, roughness, all of which I feel it does. It does contain some fermented ingredients, including bifida and galactomyces. It is not a vegan product. It does actually have some goat milk extract. I think that 
That actually kind of surprised me. Uh, some silk extract. But overall, it does have kind of a more simple formula, especially compared to the number three toner, which looks like it's from a completely different number. Now that I'm really thinking about it, I'm actually not at all surprised that it took me a little bit of time to appreciate this, because that's the exact same story for me with SK2, which is also a fermented-based product. I didn't see the hype until five weeks with that product. Again, that's kind of the way ferments work, in my opinion. Yes, they do seem to help with texture, pores, roughness, but not instantaneously. But again, in time, it did end up being a favorite. I do see the hype with this, just it's not a one and done Johnson and Johnson serum. <laughs> Stick with it for at least two weeks. Again, if not five weeks, and I think you too will see the benefits of this because again, it's a formula that I think will work out for actually most people. We're moving next into my category that I'm calling likes. I like all of these products, but I think I would purchase them again, repurchase them with maybe a really good deal. They're just not my absolute loves. And so number four is, in fact, the number four full nutrient firming cream. I do actually really like this. I'm so glad that I've been doing Numbuzzin these past few weeks because it's actually been cold. Has it been cold for any of you? We've had ridiculously cold temperatures in the middle of March. And because it's been cold and we've been running our heater, I've needed these kind of heavier creams. The number two and the number four have just been the perfect winter duo for me. This one right here, it is not as thick and heavy feeling as the number two cream. Instead, it still feels very nourishing. It feels very emollient. It almost has this kind of that bouncy texture that you sometimes do see in K-Beauty products, in fact. So I would still say you're probably gonna like this more if you have either dry or dehydrated skin versus oily skin, but it, it's been great for me. My skin type has absolutely loved it. Now, they do say that this has red ginseng, six-year-old red ginseng, in fact, which we've talked about on this channel before, but in a moisturizer, I do feel the most important aspect is the texture. That's certainly something I've said a lot on this channel. I think it is funny, a few of these products do list the extract first. Again, keep in mind that if these products were actually sold in the US, they would have to have a different order to their ingredients list. Water would have to be first. Overall, a nice humectant-rich ingredients list. It does have some fragrance. It does have some peptides and retinol, although I have absolutely no idea how much retinol is in this. They say you can use it day and night, so I suspect it's not a lot of retinol. Might be one of those fairy ingredients, I don't know. Again, for me, what, what I liked about this is the texture. They claim that it is anti-wrinkle and deeply hydrating, and again, a, a product can be anti-wrinkle simply by being a very hydrating product that plumps out the skin with water. And I do feel like that's what this product did. I really like it. Again, not sure I'm going to rush out to repurchase it, but I did really like using it. In the number five spot, we have the Seven Serum, which actually also ended up being one of the first products that I tried from this brand. I kind of slowly rolled out products from this brand to see how my skin adjusted to them. But I have to be honest with you that after using this for just about a full month, I'm not entirely sure what it does. <laughs> it feels nice. It has this nice gel texture to it, which does feel nice. The claim on this one is that it has 29 soothing ingredients. I don't know if it's just me, but I've noticed that when I personally see products that the claim is the quantity of ingredients, I often feel underwhelmed by the product. Maybe that's again my skin type. I have a reactive skin type. The more ingredients you introduce, the more potential there is for irritation. But at the same time, it seemed like a fine list. It is a fragrance-free product. It has a lot of plant extracts. And uh, it just, I'm just not sure what it did. <laughs> part of it too, though, is when you get into plant extracts, when you're just using the whole part of the plant, as opposed to, you know how we talked about Medecasoside, Asiaticoside earlier, those are the active portions of the plant, so you can pull those out and put them back into a product at a standardized level. When you're just using the full plant, you're really mostly using water. 
So are you sure you're really getting enough from whatever active portions of each of those 29 plants you've put into a formula? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know what? To very easily summarize my thoughts here, I think that I like quality over quantity in terms of my ingredients. And so I guess in the end, I'm really not super surprised that this didn't seem to do all that much for me. As for my number six product, I don't know if I like where this is ranked. I really don't know. Once I explain, you will understand. The product is the Numbuzzin Porcelain Beige Skip Tone Up Beige SPF 50 Plus PA++++ from the number three line. Okay, so I bought this so I could try out a sunscreen from the Numbuzzin brand. It seemed to have pretty good reviews overall, but I gotta say, the first time that I went to use this, I opened it up, put out my, my two fingers length of product. I hated it. This product filled me with hatred. I could feel myself getting pulled to the dark side of the force. It was so drying. It was so cakey. It was so thick. It was pilling. It was absolutely horrible. But, you know, I was watching myself in the mirror and I was thinking, this is a really pretty color though. It's a, the color is just very pretty. We've talked about this in the context of foundations. I'm picky with the colors because I have this very desaturated greenish gray skin tone. So I decided to try something with this product. I never again tried it as a sunscreen because that was truly horrific, but I did try it over another sunscreen, just a tiny amount of this, basically as a foundation. And y'all, it is such a pretty foundation. It's such a pretty foundation. It has this kind of glowiness to it. It is a great tone. Again, not orange, not pink, just a great flattering tone for lighter skin tones, admittedly. But it's so pretty. I'm wearing it now. Here's the thing. I am a little torn on whether this is foundation or isn't. <laughs> I was looking through the gallery on YesStyle, you know how it explains the products, and all over this product page they were saying, hashtag foundation free. And meanwhile I'm over here going, but it's it, it feels like foundation to me. Even though the company says it's not makeup, which I get because I often do see a lot of stigmas against makeup. I really do. I continue to see people say things like, makeup is terrible for your skin, which is just not true. It might have been in the 1930s when it was full of lead, but makeup is actually made with the same standards as skincare these days. It is made to be non-irritating. Anyway, I'm digressing. I like it as a makeup product. All right, friends, we are finally moving into my three dislikes. Oh, I'm scared. I'm terrified. <laughs> Again, though, I will stress, keep my skin type in mind, keep my preferences in mind, because I don't think any of these three products are just objectively bad. I think they were just not the right match for me. So let's start with the number two, Deep Clean Fresh Cream Cleanser. I don't want to be too hard on this because I realized really quickly that I just made a bit of a mistake in buying this. You see, as somebody with a dry skin type, I saw the words cream cleanser and I went and to cart, and to cart right now. And somehow I missed the first half of this product's name. How do you, how do you miss the first half of the name, Alice? It is called the Deep Clean Fresh Cream Cleanser. Okay, with the information I've given you, what do you think this product feels like? I know some of you can guess right there. It is a, a deep cleanser. Yes, it is a bit stripping, it's a bit harsh on my skin, but of course it is because it's in the name. <laughs> so while I initially wanted to give this ninth place in this video, I realized that wouldn't be fair because some people are gonna be smart in the way they shop and are gonna read the full product name and digest it and realize what it will be like. <laughs> it actually reminds me a lot of the Round Lab Doktu cleanser. If you liked that one, you will probably like this one. Yeah, it's it's not really a cream cleanser at all. I guess there's a creaminess to it, but it is a, a very intense foaming cleanser. Definitely. It deep cleans. Lo and behold, who would have thought? <laughs> Second to last product for me is the number one easy peasy cleansing oil, 
which is, it's not that this is a bad product, it's just that I just didn't like it. This is such a funny one because on one hand, I feel like if you've never tried any oil cleansers in your life, you could buy this and say, wait, that's game changing. It removes all of my makeup. It, it emulsifies and takes off all of my makeup. It doesn't feel stripping. It's an amazing product. How do you not like it? But for me, I've tried so many oil cleansers that in comparison, this is just not great to me. Again, not bad, but not great. It kind of feels heavy. It has a heavy feel to it. And yet it's really runny, which is kind of a bizarre combo. I, I definitely prefer either light and runny or heavy and thick. It's just it's just a strange experience for me. I didn't enjoy using it. It does have some fragrance in it, if that is of concern to anyone, but it's it's still pretty light. I just didn't like the feel of it. There's just so many oil cleansers that I personally prefer over this. So many. And then finally, my very last product. Please don't hate me. It is, in fact, the number three toner. Oh, I know some people love this so much, but it did not work out for me. I'm gonna try to explain my whole experience with this because again, I don't think this is an objectively bad product, but like I've been saying throughout this video, with my skin type, I don't think that this was the best choice. So the brand says this is for dullness, dry skin, lack of elasticity, and they highlight that it contains 50, count them, 50, fermented ingredients. You remember what I said about the number seven serum and the 29 ingredients? I feel like I should have been able to predict that I might not like this one. But again, it's not even that I didn't like it. I actually do like how it feels. I don't like how it smells. I don't like how it smells at all. It is very floral and yet herbally to me. I, I don't like the smell at all. I'm really surprised it's one of those cases where I'm surprised more people haven't talked about the smell, and yet I get it because I often forget to mention the smell in the Indie Lee toner. I think when you like a smell, sometimes you forget to mention it. When you hate a smell, you cannot help but mention it. But here's my experience with this product. Again, it feels nice. I really like the emollient sensation. It gives your skin this instant glow. But every time I would use this, in the, the following day, I would notice all these little tiny dots all over my face. I've definitely talked before about how that can be an indicator of some kind of an allergic reaction. It could be some kind of irritation, but it's not good if you are experiencing bumpiness on your skin after using a product, even the next day, there's probably something in that product that your skin is not getting along with. With this one, something really interesting is that it actually does have essential oil ingredients, but from the start, I wasn't worried about that because I like some essential oils, tea tree oil, love tea tree oil. Uh, some do in fact cause problems for me, but again, you know, the problem with essential oils is that they're very complex and they're very concentrated and two of them are not exactly identical to each other. So on one hand, I want to say maybe it was the essential oil, even though I've never reacted to the geranium oil in here before. But here's a little bit of Alice theory for you. As somebody who overthinks everything, here's my theory. So uh, we've talked before about how fermenting ingredients makes them more bioavailable for your skin, which is great if your skin loves that ingredient. But we do have 50 fermented ingredients in this. What if one of those is an undiscovered allergen for me, and yet now that it's been fermented, it's more bioavailable, so my skin will react more quickly? Again, I don't know, but I feel like it's a possibility. It's maybe something we should discuss, because again, I've never reacted to geranium oil. Doesn't mean I didn't start today. You know, that's always the problem with allergies and irritation. It can start at any point. The bottom line though, is I can't use this on my face. I am a very, very determined soul who does not give up easily, so I decided to try it on my body. And lo and behold, I can actually use this toner on my body. <laughs> Remember that body skin typically is a lot more durable than facial skin, and it makes sense too, because I use you know strong actives on my face and I really don't on my body. So anyway, 
I do actually like it as a body toner, which suggests to me that if you do not react to this product, you might actually really like it. Again, it's beautiful. I've got it all over my chest right now. If you can see, it's glowing to outer space. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing with this. In contrast to the number three serum, the toner actually, it, it kind of does give immediate results. It does give an instant glow. So in the end, I gotta say, it did not work out for my face. I am not gonna put this on my face again. No more little bumps, thank you very much. And of course, that's the reason I'm listing it last. You know, it's, it's frustrating to experience irritation from a product. It, 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 it doesn't bring you joy. So I think in the end, what I would say with this is definitely be cautious. If you're like me and you can list off a lot of times where you have reacted to products, probably proceed with caution. But if you do have a tough skin type, and especially if you're looking for glow, you may love this. And my friends, with that, we are at the end of the video. I've done it. I've shared my honest thoughts with the Numbuzzin brand, as always. Feel free to share yours. You do not have to agree with me. You can, again, have a completely inverted favorites list. But I hope this video was helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching. We are going to be doing some interesting upcoming trials. Next up, I am doing the Kane Kombucha Toner on one half of my face versus the Fresh Toner on the other half. Oh, I'm excited to see how that goes. And then we will be doing Make Prim, which is the brand that you all voted for. So I hope you do stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you all next time.